Okay, welcome back. We're uh, going to look at section 5.3 today, which is discussing adding, subtracting, and multiplying polynomials. Again, this is something that you should have done in Algebra 1, but we will uh, spend a little time on this. Uh, if you understand the concept of this, then you will understand the concept of foiling. Uh, this is just a little bit more complicated just because it has more steps. So the objective for today is add, subtract, multiply, and simplify polynomials and rational expressions. So that's pretty straightforward. And then the only vocabulary we have today is like terms. And you should know what like terms are. Like terms are terms with the same variable parts. In other words, an x and an x are like terms. x squared, x squared are like terms. But like x and x to the third are not like terms. So what we want to do is, this is going to be a fairly brief uh, section. Uh, we're going to, we'll work on this in class a little bit more. But what we want to do is make sure that you uh, understand the basics, but I'm not going to get too much detail because I think it's pretty straightforward. But, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add. So adding polynomials. So what we want to do is when you're adding polynomials, you want to keep like terms. So there's two ways that you can do this. For those of you that this is easier for, you don't have to line anything up. You could just say, okay, I have a, I have a power of 3, I have a power of 3, 2 plus 3 is 5x to the third. So you know that term is good. Then we go to the next one. 2x squared plus negative 4x squared is negative 2x squared. Then if you notice here, there's no x term over here. So you can just simply say negative 3x plus 0 is negative 3x. And then our last one, 5 plus a negative 7 is negative 2. And you could say we're done. Now, for those of you that need to see this a little bit more visually, let's line this up for you. What we'll do is we're going to line this up vertically. So it's going to be 2x to the third plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. And then what I'm going to do is right below it, I'll put our other one. And I'm going to line it up exactly as the like terms would line up. So 3x to the third minus 4x squared, and I'm going to put a plus 0 here because that's our placeholder, and then minus 7. And then when we add, we just add straight down vertically. So we end up with 2 plus 3 is 5x to the third. 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2x squared. And then negative 3 plus 0 is negative 3x. And then 5 plus negative 7 is negative 2. So either way works, whatever is easiest for you. But understand, if you're going to do it this way, you better get it right. Because if you don't, then you need to take the time to do it correctly. There's no sense of you doing it a quicker way if you can't get it right. Okay, next thing, subtracting. Now, subtracting is much more difficult because it's very, very easy to make mistakes, especially if you're going to try and do this in your head. Because the same thing is true. You need to make sure that you're only combining like terms. So here we have a power of 3, but over here we don't. So yeah, it is okay to say 3y to the third minus 0 is 3y to the third. I have no problem with that. Here's where the problem is going to come in. On your second term, you don't have a y squared term. Over here you do. So the typical, the typical uh, response or typical answer would be is just to leave it, oh, we're, well, this is just going to stay. It's going to be plus 6y squared, but that's not correct. That is not correct, and the reason is this. Technically, we have nothing here. We have 0 here. So if we do 0 minus 6y squared, we're going to end up with a negative 6y squared. And the big mistake is most people will put a positive. Okay, next one. Negative 4y minus a negative 6y is actually a positive 2y. The mistake there would be People will look at this and say negative 4y and negative 6y is negative 10y. But don't forget this minus sign. Negative 4y minus a negative 6y is a positive 2y. And then our last one, 7 minus a negative 13 is actually going to be positive 20. Now again, for those of you that want to write this out vertically, do that. Take the time to do it. 3y to the third. And we're going to put plus 0 because there's no y squared term, minus 4y, plus 7. And then right below that, we're going to put a minus, and then I'm going to put a 
parentheses, so that helps us a little bit. We have 0 here, plus 6y squared minus 6y minus 13. The reason why I put the parentheses is I want you to remember that this minus sign has to be applied to everything. Okay, so now we do 3y to the third minus 0 is 3y to the third. 0 minus 6y squared is negative 6y squared. Negative 4y minus negative 6y is positive 2y. And then 7 minus a negative 13 is a positive 20. So that's the subtraction of it. Now, there is a third way you can do it that I'm not going to write out here. But the third way is pretty is uh, similar to what we just did here. And what is what happens is, is you can take this minus and you can distribute it through this entire second line, and then you can just add the two up. So this would be a negative zero, add the two up, it's three y to the third. Put the negative through, it's negative six y squared. Zero plus negative six y squared is negative six y squared. Put the negative through, positive six y. So then you have negative four plus six y is two y. So that's just a different way of looking at it. Maybe it's easier for you, maybe it's not. Okay, so let's move on to the multiplication. Multiplication is actually, in my mind, way easier than addition. And the reason is, is you simply just are multiplying things by each other. There's no like terms, nothing like that. It's just simply multiplying everything by everything. So the way we're going to do this is we are simply taking, we're not foiling. Please don't think it's foil because then we're going to miss a term somewhere. Foil means first, outer, inner, last. Well, the problem is we have this extra term in here, so we can't just foil. So what we're going to do is we're just simply going to multiply every term in the first parentheses by every term in the second parentheses. So it's going to be negative 2y squared times y, and then negative 2y squared times negative 2. Then we're going to do the same thing with the 3y. 3y times y times y times negative 2. And then we're going to do the same thing with the negative 6. Negative 6 times y, negative 6 times negative 2. Now, you can write this all out, and I will the first time, but you don't have to. It becomes easier the more and more you do this. But this will look like negative 2y squared times y. And then we just put a plus sign. We always just put a plus sign, and we'll see what sign we end up with. And then we have negative 2y squared times negative 2. plus 3y times y plus 3y times negative 2. And I'm going to create another line here. And then our last one is plus negative 6 times y plus negative 6 times negative 2. So again, all you're doing is taking each term here and multiplying it by both. Each term here, multiply it by both. Each term, or this term, multiply it by both. And then we simplify. So we end up with negative 2y squared times y is negative 2y to the third. Then we have negative 2y squared times negative 2 is a positive 4y squared. Then we have 3y times y is a positive 3y squared. Then the next one we have 3y times negative 2 is minus 6y. Next one, negative 6 times y is minus 6y again. And then negative 6 times negative 2 is a positive 12. Don't forget those, we're not completely done yet. We need to combine like terms. We have two squared terms here that need to be combined. And we have two y terms that need to be combined. So make sure we do that. So our final answer should be negative 2y to the third. When we combine these, we get 7y squared. When we combine these, we get negative 12y and then plus 12. There's your answer. 
So why don't you try the one below on your own? So hit pause right now, and then we'll go over it when uh, you know after you've had a chance. Just hit play when you're ready to go over it. Okay, so the answer is posted for you. And again, here's how we got this. 3x squared times 2x is 6x to the third. 3x squared times 3 is 9x squared. 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times 3 is 9x. 5 times 2x is 10x. And 5 times 3 is 15. So again, I don't even need to write out everything I did up here. I can just go through and do it. 3x squared times the first term. 3x squared times the second term. 3x times the first term. 3x times the second term. 5 times the first term. 5 times the second term. And then we'll get that, and then we simplify to get 6x to the third plus 15x squared plus 19x plus 15. So this next part is called special product patterns. Now, you don't have to use these, but maybe it just makes things a little bit easier. You'll recognize things. It makes it quicker. But the first one we're going to talk about is the sum and difference. And what happens is, is the sum and difference is just simply when you have two of the exact same thing, but there's a plus sign and a minus sign. And this actually makes it really simple because what happens is, is when you do this, the middle term will always cancel out. So up here in the example, you see x plus 4, x minus 4. Notice there's no x term in the middle because the plus and minus always cancel out. So, so the same thing is true with this. What you're going to end up with is 5y times 5y, which is 25y squared, and then negative 3 times 3, which is negative 9. That's it. That's what this helps with, is it helps you do this a little bit quicker without having to do the full foil all the way out. So the next one is when you have a square of a binomial. And what they say with this one is, again, I don't mind if you foil this out, you're gonna get the right answer, but this is just in case you wanna learn this. We know that it's gonna be 4a, sorry, not 4a, it's gonna be 4a times 4a, which means you're gonna get 16a squared. And we know that you're gonna have plus 49 at the end, because seven times seven is 49. The middle term is real simple. What you do is you take the two and you multiply them together. So four times seven is 28, and then you double that because you're gonna have two of those terms. So it's gonna be 56. So it'll be 56A in the middle. But you could have probably foiled that about in about the same amount of time. And for this last one, we're just gonna go ahead and skip over this. This is one of the things that I, I really don't like this problem. I don't like the cube of a binomial because it's too much for you to memorize. And I'd rather you, instead of trying to memorize something, just understand how to multiply out a, a, a cubed function. There's no sense of trying to waste and memorize these formulas because you're never going to remember them. And you should never be expected to remember them. So we're just going to move on. Okay, so now applying this to the real world is actually taking things like you know, volume type functions and being able to multiply them. So we're not going to go through on multiplying all of these out, but the idea is, is that we should now be able to do this. We want to find the volume, which is length times width times height. Here's the length, here's the width, here's the height. So we simply have x plus 6 times x times 2x plus 1. And we're not going to multiply this all out right now, but I want you to do this on your own and bring it to class tomorrow, and we will see. We're going to work on this at the beginning of class tomorrow. On the second one, same thing. We're using a cone. We know what the radius is. We know what the height is. So we can take our formula, v equals one-third times pi times the radius, which now we're going to replace the radius with, with what it is, x minus 3. And we're going to replace... Uh, sorry, don't forget to square it. And then we're going to replace the height with what that is, x plus 3. And again, we can multiply this out. I want you to do this, and I want you to bring it to class tomorrow. We're going to talk about this. See, here is where we are actually applying why it's important to be able to multiply polynomials. Because when we start getting into real problems, and maybe this not, might not be real to you, but this is a application to what we're doing. So this is going to be what we work on a little bit in class as one of our activities, is making sure we can apply what we just learned to some real world problems. So I will see you tomorrow. Make sure you multiply these out and have them ready to go.